Hi, in this video I'm going to show how it's really simple to deploy an Apache Kafka cluster on Kubernetes using the StreamZ operator and how it's possible to integrate this Kafka cluster with Azure Heaven Tabs. So let me just show the kind of scenario that I'm going to demo you uh, in a few minutes. So first of all, I'm going to use the AKS, the Azure Kubernetes service for deploying the Kubernetes cluster, and then the StreamZ operator for deploying the Kafka cluster running on Kubernetes. Let's imagine that uh, this is uh, one company where uh, there are some microservices communicating through an internal topic. So, for example, we have just a producer and a consumer exchanging some messages through this internal topic, which is internal because we don't want to expose the data inside this topic outside of the cluster, outside of the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, so, mm, this is a kind of just an internal communication inside that company. Let's imagine that at some point there is the need for integrate the applications in this company with some other applications with another company. But the second one uh, is using Azure Event Hubs for uh, uh, its applications to exchange uh, messages. So we have on the right hand side a consumer getting some messages from the Azure Event Hubs. What we need here is um, uh, moving some messages from the Apache Kafka cluster to Heaven Tab. Of course, uh, we don't want to move the internal data, but uh, we want to move a kind of processed data. So the first company is going to add uh, a uh, Kafka Streams API based application, which is going to read the messages from this internal topic and then processing them in order to produce some final messages on another topic that uh, will be um, mirrored to the Heaven Hubs. Why I am going to uh, say mirror? Because um, uh, in order to move these messages from Kafka cluster to Azure Event Hub, we can just use a Mirror Maker 2 instance. Mirror Maker 2 is part of the Apache Kafka ecosystem and uh, it's an application for uh, mirroring data across different Kafka clusters, uh, across different data centers, for example, but in this case can be used for mirroring data uh, between a Kafka cluster and uh, Azure Event Hubs because uh, Azure Event Hubs provide uh, a uh, Kafka uh, API so it's possible to communicate with Azure Event Hubs even using the Kafka uh, custom protocol. So this Mirror Maker 2 instance as well as the Kafka cluster is deployed through the StreamZ operator and uh, it will filter the topic that needs to be mirrored from one one side to the other, not moving the messages from the internal topic, of course. So let's see how it's possible to uh, implement this kind of uh, uh, scenario. First of all, let me show that uh, in the Microsoft Azure portal I have uh, an Azure Heaven Tabs uh, namespace where, uh, as you can see here, there are no topics yet, so there is no topics about what we have to go into mirror. So first of all, we have to deploy the Kafka cluster on Kubernetes using the StreamZ operator. Uh, first of all, let me show that uh, we have this um, uh, Kubernetes cluster running uh, as AKS with three nodes and that uh, I have uh, the um, StreamZ cluster operator already running in the operator's namespace. So I have uh, installed it uh, through the um, operator hub.io and now I have the StreamZ cluster operators running. At this point, what we need to do is to deploy the Kafka cluster. Kafka cluster is described by a Kafka cluster resource that I'm going to show in a few, but let me just uh, apply the custom resource in order to give more time to the uh, cluster operator to uh, create uh, the Kafka cluster itself. So I am applying this um, custom resource and uh, we can just check that the first pods about Zookeeper are going to be uh, created in the right uh, namespace, the StreamZ demo namespace in this case, but um, let me show you what's the 
Kafka custom resource that I'm deploying. So, uh, with the, the StreamZ cluster operator, a Kafka cluster is described by a Kafka custom resource where I can define all the information about uh, the Kafka cluster itself. So, for example, the version that I'm going to use, the number of replicas, in this case, um, a Kafka cluster with the three brokers, but it's really simple, for example, just scaling up and down the cluster, uh, updating this field, uh, and the uh, cluster operator will be in charge to deploy the new pod or removing the existing ones when we are scaling up or down. Then um, through the listeners uh, uh, field we are able to um, expose the Kafka cluster to the clients uh, in order to have the clients connecting to the uh, Kafka cluster and exchanging messages through topics. For example we have here just two listeners. One is kind of plain listener where the um, Kafka client can be connected without uh, uh, encryption on port uh, 1992 and uh, another one uh, is um, uh, a TLS uh, internal listener where the Kafka clients can connect uh, through uh, TLS so with uh, encryption. They are kind of internal listeners because they can be used by clients running on the same Kubernetes cluster where the Kafka cluster itself is running. There is another type which is the external type that it's not used in this case, but it's the listener type for exposing the Kafka cluster outside of the Kubernetes cluster, so allowing application running outside for connecting to the Kafka cluster. Here there are some information about the configuration of all the brokers on the, um, in the Kafka um, cluster and for example uh, if we change uh, one of the properties in this config field the um, cluster operator will just start the rolling update so rolling the brokers one by one for updating if needed otherwise in Kafka there are some uh, properties that don't need um, a rolling update so a restarting to be update so it will be the cluster operator to have the logic for doing that uh, other than this there is the storage field where we are specifying that we want a kind of persistent storage for um, the Kafka brokers so persisting the messages we can use even the uh, ephemeral one where the messages are uh, loose when uh, the pods are deleted and at the same time, uh, on the other side, we have the Zookeeper information. So Kafka needs right now uh, a Zookeeper ensemble for running. Even here we are specifying to have three nodes, uh, the kind of same storage, which is a persistent one. And finally, the entity operator. So the cluster operator not only deploy Kafka and Zookeeper, but even to other operators, the topic and the user operator, which are in charge to handle topics and users. So with StreamZ you can create and handle your Kafka cluster, but even create some topics, as we'll see later, or even creating users uh, with the corresponding ACLs for providing uh, uh, the permissions to write and read from these different topics. Let's see at this point if um, the uh, cluster is deployed and all the Zookeeper and Kafka pods are running. So here we are the um, we have the, the, the nodes related to Zookeeper, to Kafka and the entity operator. And for example, we can see even that uh, some persistent volume claim were created for storing the messages or even for storing the information about Zookeeper itself. Um, saying that we have the Kafka cluster up and running and um, Kafka is now a native resource in Kubernetes so for example we can do a kind of uh, kubectl get Kafka in the stream z namespace and as we can see here now Mm, there are some information about the Kafka cluster as we do a get for pods for deployment so all the native resources uh, in Kubernetes now even Kafka is a native resource in Kubernetes so we can see uh, some simple information like the number of replicas in the Kafka cluster the number of Zookeeper nodes uh, and so on let's move on and let's create the topics that we need for this demo so the topics that I'm going to create uh, I can show them here um, we have a couple of topics. So the first one is the internal topic 
So we have a Kafka topic resource. This is the internal topic used by the internal application. Uh, it's uh, related to this cluster, which is the one that we just created. And here's some information about the topic, three partitions, three replicas, and more specific configuration. At the same time, we have another topic, which is uh, the one that we are going to uh, mirror. Uh, and uh, this uh, topic uh, has the kind of the same configuration of the first one. So let's remember that this one will be the one mirrored from the Kafka cluster to the uh, Azure event app. As we can see, Kafka topic is a custom resource. So at this point, we can just apply this custom resource in our stream Z demo namespace and the topic operator will take care of creating these topics. Now we can see that the topic um, were created at um, operator level because we can show them as a Kubernetes native resource with uh, some information like partition replication factor, but how we can uh, um, see that they are really uh, they were really created uh, inside the Kafka cluster. So let me just use this command for running on one of the Kafka pods, um, the, one of the tools that Kafka provides, the Kafka topics tool, in order to describe all the topics that are available in the Kafka cluster. So if we run this command, we can see that the two topics uh, were really created in the Kafka cluster with three partitions, uh, uh, three as replication factor, and how uh, these replicas are distributed across the brokers inside the cluster. So we have all the topics that we need for um, uh, the demo itself. Um, now we can deploy the kind of internal applications. So we are on the first step for now. So let's uh, apply um, these applications. So I have some application here and I'm going to show what they uh, will do. So um, I have uh, here, for example, a simple uh, consumer application, uh, which is going to consume on this internal topic, joining this um, consumer group uh, and connecting to the current Kafka cluster. So it's just a um, client uh, example provided by the StreamZ uh, project. On the other side, we also have uh, the producer application, which is, of course, quite uh, similar. Uh, it connects to uh, the Kafka cluster, writing messages to the internal topic with a delay of one second, so the time between two different messages, and the uh, message will just be a text string, uh, this text um, string. Um, let's see now uh, how they are exchanging these messages. So we can uh, get the name of the pods, and for example the producer one and check the log of this producer so we can check the logs of this producer in the stream z demo namespace and we can see here that it's producing really these messages and on the other side let's do the same for the consumer so we have this uh, consumer here let's check what's the log of this consumer in the stream z demo namespace and as we can see the messages are just exchanged so we have these two internal applications communicating through this internal topic exchanging these simple text messages now what we want is consume again from this same internal topic but running a Kafka Streams API application that does a kind of processing. The simple processing will be just uh, uh, inverting the characters in the string and then writing to the final topic that will be mirrored to uh, Event Hub, right? But first of all we have to set up the mirroring. In order to mirror this data I'm going to deploy uh, Mirror Maker 2 through uh, StreamZ and through the Kafka Mirror Maker 2 custom resource. So uh, first let me just apply the um, custom resource and then I will show you what's described there. So we can apply this custom resource and we can even um, just check that uh, the Mirror Maker 2 uh, pod is uh, 
going to be creating and not ready yet for running but if we want to show what's uh, uh, how this mirror maker 2 instance is described we can see here that uh, the Kafka mirror maker 2 custom resource defines first of all the two clusters um, that I'm using for moving data from one side to the other so the the, the, the local in Kubernetes uh, Kafka cluster here and the uh, event tab on the other side so this is the event tab namespace some configuration parameter the authentication for the uh, event tab so I already prepared the secret with the, the information about the endpoint and the uh, uh, shared access key for uh, writing to the uh, Azure event tab and uh, in the mirror sections we describe the, the direction of the mirroring so we are mirroring from the source cluster which is the Kafka cluster to the target cluster which is the heaven tab then there are different connectors because mirror maker 2 is based on Kafka connect the first one for mirroring the messages the other one is an heartbeat for checking that the connection is established and it's working and the checkpoint for connection um, that is used for uh, uh, somehow mirroring the offsets of the consumer from one uh, cluster to the other if for example at some point uh, the source cluster fail and uh, we want to move the consumer to consume on the target cluster but starting from the point where the consumers were on the first cluster it's not something that we are going to use in this demo but just explain what the checkpoint connector is and finally for example we are setting the topics pattern because we don't want to mirror all the topics from Kafka to event tabs but just the one that we want to expose the messages so the, the just one topic that has this kind of prefix here so let's check if now mirror maker 2 is running and um, let's see if on the other side so in heaven tabs finally we can see all the topics related to mirror maker 2 for working are created so we can see the heartbeats one some other topic for the checkpointing for the offset and so on but the most important one in our case is the one that is the mirror of the in the topic that we have on the uh, Kafka cluster and um, uh, you can see here that a prefix is used which is the name of the source cluster uh, this is uh, the default way used by mirror maker in order even to enable uh, bidirectional mirroring from one cluster to the other and vice versa so now the, the last step is to uh, starting our Azure event app consumer so for uh, doing this uh, I have just mm, written a kind of simple um, uh, Java application and this application I've prepared the scripts for running this consumer consuming on the heaven tab uh, that we have now uh, in Azure uh, let's start the application we can see a kind of logging information there are no messages yet so there is nothing that this consumer is consuming right now uh, last step and let me say final step is starting the Kafka Streams API application so this application that I'm going to deploy will read from the internal topic will do some processing uh, that is just um, reverting the order of the text in the um, messages and then uh, uh, writing to the final topic that is then mirrored to event tabs so the application is uh, starting so let's see if it's really up and running in the right namespace um, yes it's up and running and uh, we should see now that yes the uh, heaven tab uh, consumer is now receiving these messages uh, with the the original text message which is reverted in the order of the characters right uh, there is uh, no interference with how the internal application are working so we can see here this is the producer producing these messages this is the consumer consuming just the internal messages and then on the other side the streams application is processing them and the mirroring is happened on the uh, Azure event tab uh, side so um, that's um, uh, that is the kind of demo that uh, I would uh, like to show you so 
you can see how it's really uh, simple in this case to uh, integrate um, uh, a Kafka cluster with the Azure Event Hub because it uh, supports the Kafka protocol and uh, handling all the um, Kafka cluster side with the StreamZ operator for uh, deploying the cluster, handling the cluster, deploying the mirror maker to instance, uh, and then mirroring this data to Event Hub. So the integration is really easy, uh, starting from this scenario where one company has the needs for integrate with another one using different technologies.